This is a movie recommendation. This afternoon I saw a film called All That Heaven Allows and it's directed by Douglas Sirk from 1955. It stars Jane Wyman and Rock Hudson, a star-crossed lover separated by class. The film's plot in general, I guess, it's about this woman named Carrie, played by Jane Wyman. She's recently widowed and her friends in her upper middle class society have been trying to set her up, find her someone new to marry. And well, I guess she ends up falling in love with her gardener, played by Rock Hudson. What I guess draws her to Rock Hudson's character is that he's very different from the men who she is normally courted by, men who are part from her social class, who participate in the same normal things that I guess she's just too tired of. They go to the same dinner parties and talk the same evaporated conversations. They prioritize accumulating money more so than anything else and something about Rock Hudson and how he sees the world differently, his character, just she feels very drawn to it as if she's always felt something missing in her life and finally she found someone who I guess had a different perspective on how to live life. In one part of the film, Rock Hudson's character invites her uh, to his friend's house and to have dinner and on the table she sees a copy of Henry David Thoreau's Walden uh, and that kind of sets the tone for your, for those who are unfamiliar or who, or who are familiar with, with Walden, you might know which direction this is going in. Essentially the book is about a man who, well it's an autobiogra autobiographical book of sorts of Henry David Thoreau. He decides to, I guess, this is strange to kind of describe it today, but he self-isolates purposefully um, in a forest, uh, trying to cut him off from society to see how he'll, I guess, fare or see how that will, you know, how it'll influence the way he writes and thinks about the world. So he does it for a couple of months. And it's a very fascinating book to read. Um, anyway, so th that kind of character of sorts is what that kind of ethos of living life away from material possessions, away from many of the things that many might call superficial as part of the, I guess, normative capitalist model of living life. I guess she finds it very refreshing and Rock Hudson's character um, is just, her name, his name is Ron in the film and not only is he very different from the men who she usually is surrounded by, but he's also very kind and heartwarming and I guess I'm, it's hard to tell exactly what he sees in her, but she's definitely deeply in love. The problem with it is that in her society, in her upper middle class housewife world of sorts, uh, it is not acceptable to, I guess, have relations with people outside of it. Despite that, she really is in love with him and is optimistic, maybe perhaps if they know more about him, perhaps if you know, they just meet him, they will like him as well and they will not think about so much about his class and accept him for who he is. And most prominently of the people who she tries to perhaps uh, make um, closer to her side of things uh, is her children. Her children, when they first find out that she's planning to get married again, she ends up wanting to marry him. When they find out that she's getting married again, she's, they're very elated, they're very happy to see that her, their mother who they're soon planning to kind of um, leave behind of sorts, uh, is finally gonna have a marriage again. They're happy for her until they find out it's to their former gardener. And then they are appalled and that it, and they are appalled along with the rest of her community, her family and her friends, people who she thought loved her for who she is, she realizes only really cares about her image. And in some revealing scenes, she eventually has to face the fact that none of them accept her for who she is and none of them accept her new love, the love of her life, this new relationship that she finally feels true for is unacceptable in the society she's living in and she has to make the choice to choose her society, her family, her friends versus the man he loves, as she loves. It's a decision that she has to somehow make and she ends up bringing it up to Rock Hudson's character and so in a very pivotal scene, which I'm not going to spoil. But that's, I guess, a setup to the film, and it's a very beautiful movie. I don't want to, you know, if you want to see what happens, you have to see the film. It's a, it's a wonderful film, and I feel like for those who are unfamiliar with watching older movies, people who maybe have not much experience with melodrama or camp or, I don't know, there's just a way of making films back then that I feel if you're more used to the realism of today, you might think, oh, people are acting so unrealistically. They're speaking in a strange way. Uh, it's not, you know, realistic or whatever. I find that with older films, I don't want to generalize, but with many older films, 
they pretty much act more like mythic characters, they're archetypes. It's more like abstractions of sorts. You're seeing it's a variation of the Romeo and Juliet story of Enric, of this love that cannot really exist in this society and you know realism doesn't really matter in this world or film and it's it's about seeing these mythic archetypes interact with one another and seeing how the the final result changes from what we we may be expecting. It's a beautiful film and it's inspired many other filmmakers, particularly Rainer Werner Fassbinder, the West German filmmaker, and Todd Haynes, the American filmmaker. So much so that both of them have created variations of All That Heaven Allows. Uh, Rainer Werner Fassbinder, for example, created this film in the 70s called Ali, Fear it's, Eats the Soul. But in that film, he subverts it of sorts because it is, he doesn't make it about class. He makes it about a uh, race where this German woman falls in love with an Arab man and that's where the kind of tension um, kind of is uh, in the film. And in the film um, Far From Heaven from Todd Haynes, he doesn't necessarily remake this film, but he takes a lot of the elements from this film and from what I hear, Imitation of Life. And he subverts it in a way by adding a queer element to it all, which I guess is um, sometimes people say there's a, uh, there is somewhat of a queer, sub, you know, queer undertone with, the mel with melodrama in the 50s, though I'm not very familiar with it, but I guess Todd Haynes puts it more to the forefront by having it be a vital part of its plot. Both of them are great films, and both of them are very much inspired by all that heaven allows, and I guess I'm just, you know, this is just a recommendation for anyone who wants to see something that will perhaps move you in ways that it's hard, that in ways that, will, that are perhaps hard to come by during these, these self-isolating times. Uh, I'm, I highly recommend All That Heaven Allows, and if you like the film, to explore more of Douglas Sirk's work, as I will over the next few days. So that's um, All That Heaven Allows, and I hope that you check it out.